to my channel, Plant Based Storm. This is another What I Eat in a Day video, episode two. So let's just dive right on into breakfast. So I'm going to start out with a couple pieces of Ezekiel bread. You want a hearty bread so that it can hold up to the cooking process being soaked in this liquid. And that bread is also whole grain and sprouted. This is about a quarter cup of frozen aquafaba that I'm defrosting, adding an eighth of a cup of soy milk you can use whatever plant milk you like and then cinnamon to taste and just whisk this all together and you can also add vanilla in this i didn't do that but i did add some of this absolutely delicious texas hill country mandarin balsamic y'all this stuff is so good and this brings the french toast to a whole new level and I ended up mixing this up and tasting it and decided that I loved this flavor so much that I added in another tablespoon. So I put two tablespoons of that in there and they have been kind enough to give y'all a discount code, which I'm going to put in the description box below. And you just click on that link and enter plant base at checkout and you get 10% off if you would like to try this out. And I don't get anything out of this. I just wanted to offer this for y'all because this balsamic is hands down some of the best that I've ever tasted. So with that being said, you just want to go ahead and put your bread into this mixture. The uh, chickpea aquafaba is going to act like the egg and you just kind of like soak both sides like you would regular French toast and then you're going to get ready to pop it into the frying pan. Now I did have this frying pan set to a higher temperature, uh, probably like medium high, and I did that so I could get the French toast nice and toasty right off. You can see whenever I flip it over. And then I'm gonna let this cook um, for a little bit while it is um, on a lower setting to kind of cook the liquid out of it um, because it doesn't quick cook exactly like an egg, but it's very close. And then I'm also going to use that delicious balsamic and make a dressing to go over my greens that I eat with my breakfast. So one tablespoon of that, a tablespoon of stone ground mustard, and then a tablespoon of plain water and mix that up. And I'm going to drizzle this all over my greens and it is so, so, so good. So I had some fresh kale that had actually seen better days. It was getting like, hey, I need to be used. So that's exactly what I did. Sauteed that up. I love to cut up my French toast and dip it. Then I also have that delicious mandarin dressing drizzled all over my greens. And y'all, this was so delicious with a fresh orange on the side. So next up for lunch is sopas and these are super yummy. Let's go ahead and see how they're put together. So I'm excited to share this recipe with y'all in the pot. I have a handful of diced up tomatoes. There's no right or wrong amount, just however much you like. Some onion and jalapeno. And I'm also going to add in some of this bacon lover seasoning. Now this is a vegan seasoning, but it's going to lend a lot of flavor because this is going to be a delicious pot of beans. So I'm adding in two teaspoons of this seasoning. I'm going to cook down the veggies and then we will be adding in the beans next we're gonna go ahead and get the sopas ready I'm gonna put this into my air fryer and these are just like really thick corn cakes um, sort of like a corn tortilla but they are a lot firmer whenever they're cooked when you do them in the air fryer they are crispy on the outside and warm and soft on the inside and so delicious. So now the tomatoes and veggies have cooked down. I have strained two cans of pinto beans and I'm going to add that to the pot. And I'm also going to add in a full can of water. I just used the can that the beans actually just came out of. And I also do not have to get another dish out. So it's just easy to add in the water um, using the can. And then we're going to turn this on high and let this reduce and cook down. 
uh, so that the beans are nice and tender and the flavors have a chance to meld together. So this is kind of like a charro bean. Also forgot to mention that I have my Mexican rice cooking on the back eye and I already have a video up for that. I'll add a link in the description box below and I'll also put a card here in the actual video so you can click on either place to check out how to make the rice if that's something you're interested in. You can see that the beans have cooked down now and I have just chopped up some regular lettuce. I'm gonna use a little bit of fresh lime. This is arugula chopped up just because it's something I actually love and a half of an avocado to top the sopas with. Look how thick and lovely those beans are. Also, the rice is ready, and look how fluffy and delicious this rice is. So, it is time to get the sopas together, so let's get it done. I like to just start with the rice and then build it up with all the other ingredients from there. You can put it on in any order that you like, but this is just the way that I do it. So I like to just finish this off with a little bit of hot sauce and a squeeze of fresh lime. And this has become a new favorite of mine for lunch or any time that I have the ability to make this because it's just so yummy. Okay, so next up is a Mexican casserole that is so full of flavor. So let's get it going. So this recipe utilizes what is left over from lunch since you use such a small amount on, on the sopas. So this is something fun. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so here I'm making a homemade red enchilada sauce for a Mexican casserole. So delicious and completely different than what you get out of the can. I'm adding in three tablespoons of oat flour, one tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, and one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Use the Mexican oregano if you have it. If not, regular will work fine, but the Mexican oregano just gives it a different flavor. And then salt and pepper to taste. And you're gonna cook this until you smell the aromatics in the air and the raw flavor of the flour is cooked off. And then over here on the stove, I have some potatoes, about eight ounces, one carrot, a small onion, and a jalapeno, and that is going to be a cheese sauce. So I'm gonna let that boil while I'm also cooking the flour for the homemade enchilada sauce, which, by the way, you can use a can if you need to get this on the table quickly, or you just don't want to make uh, an enchilada sauce. It will work just fine, but I encourage you to try this one day because a homemade enchilada sauce is completely different and absolutely worth the effort. Once you can see it browning, you're gonna go ahead and add in three ounces of tomato paste that has been mixed down with some vegetable broth. I probably use about a quarter cup to a half cup of vegetable broth to get that to a more liquefied uh, state so that it was easier to stir into the flour. So you're just gonna whisk that in after you pour it in and kind of let that cook and then you're gonna be ready to pour in two cups of vegetable broth um, and then you're going to have to whisk that as well until there are no lumps or bumps in there you want it to be nice and smooth Okay, so you wanna allow this to start to bubble and come to a little boil while you're cooking it. Um, and this is gonna allow the enchilada sauce to thicken up. I'm gonna use the rice and beans from earlier to go ahead and help me start putting together this casserole while the um, enchilada sauce is still cooking. You want it to thicken up and not be watery, but you don't want it super thick. So I've got it on low while I'm putting this together and just going to start putting in some corn tortillas into the bottom of the casserole dish. And this is a, like a medium sized casserole dish. It's not really big. 
And I'm just going to layer this and try to fill in the gaps the best I can. You can tear some tortillas if you need to so that you don't have to use a ton of tortillas. And it doesn't have to cover every surface on the bottom. I'm just trying to fill in the gaps the best that I can. So you can do what you want with it. This isn't like an exact recipe. And then I'm just going to use the rice and beans from earlier to kind of layer over the bottom of these tortillas and spread it out as evenly as possible. I'm going to try to get two full layers layers in this casserole dish so try to keep enough to do another layer and then to bulk this casserole up I'm also adding in another can of black beans that have been rinsed and some corn and I'm, there's no exact measurements I'm just sprinkling it in throughout a layer you can put in however much you want or however little you like or you can change it up and put in something else if you desire so after the enchilada sauce is cooked for about 10 to 15 minutes and thickened up nicely to your desired thickness, then go ahead and start to pour this over the casserole. And I'm just going to do this with a spoon and then I'm going to spread it out over the layer and get it uh, as even as possible. Okay, so then you just want to go ahead and repeat the same process all over again and create the second layer for the casserole. I accidentally forgot the corn, so I'm just going to end up adding it on top of the enchilada sauce because it doesn't really matter and spreading that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and top this off with one last layer of tortillas and pour the rest of the enchilada sauce right on top. Now for the cheese sauce, I'm going to go ahead and take everything that was in the pot and put it into the blender. And I'm going to blend that up and add in some spices. Also going to use most of the water, maybe all, uh, in the cheese sauce so that it helps me get the consistency that I need. So let's go ahead and get this made. So this is everything in there and I used about three quarters of a cup of that water. And I'm going to go ahead and get this blended up and then I'll start adding the spices. So I'm adding in a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, two teaspoons of garlic powder, and one teaspoon of onion powder. And I'm going to just blend that up. You can also add salt to taste. I don't usually add salt to mine because we try to keep ours low sodium. Uh, and we will end up adding salt to our complete dish at the end, be right before we eat it. Um, but you could totally add salt. I would say probably a half a teaspoon to this, um, but just do it to taste. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a dash of cayenne pepper just to kick up the heat level a little bit. That can be totally omitted. I did end up adding a little bit more water to get this consistency. I ended up using uh, all of the water actually that it, they have boiled in. And I'm just going to drizzle this right on top and spread it across the casserole and then get it ready to go into the oven. So once you get it all spread out, you want to go ahead and cover the casserole with foil or some other way. You want to make sure that you cover it so that it doesn't dry out as it's cooking. And we're going to put this into a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and let this cook for about 30 minutes. And while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and put together some pico which is just onion, tomato, jalapeno that are diced up with a squeeze of fresh lime. And then I'm just going to cut up some plain iceberg lettuce to eat on the side. So after about 30 minutes or so, you're going to take your casserole out and it is ready to serve. I like to put some fresh cheese sauce right on top of my portion on my plate so that it is nice and extra creamy. And this was a hit, so delicious. Remind you, there is a 10% off link in the description box below, and you just enter plant base at checkout if you would like to get some of this balsamic vinegar. I don't get anything out of it. It's just for y'all. So I also want to say thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And as always, thank you so much for watching.